because it is time for that. We're going to do our spring 2021 anime preview guide. That's right. We're going to talk about 23 anime airing this season. So as usual, we sat down, we watched episode one of a bunch of new anime airing this season. We, we skipped anything that was a season two or a three or whatever. And we skipped any sequels. Um, uh, so not you know, numbered um, uh, things. And uh, we skipped anything that was obviously aimed at really young kids. And we still couldn't get through it all. Yeah. There is so much. Just so much out there. Um, I actually have a count here. Oh, I don't think I got... Oh, so we... Um, there were something like 30 anime this season on TV. Yeah. Just within that count. Not to mention all the sequels and so forth and so on. So, yeah. Yeah, kind spread across sense. Crunchy, Netflix, uh, Funimation. Funimation. Yep. A couple things that were like, licensed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, what? It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> but again, again, I keep saying this and I will keep saying it. Yay. Yeah, exactly. I would... Yeah. So totally prefer that to being like, okay, it's now our anime review for the 10 that are new this season. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and the one that actually lasted 20 minutes and all the rest were like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember those seasons where it was like, just gosh, you know, it's like, okay, there's anime, but there's like a handful of things. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, absolutely no complaints. Now there's arm loads of stuff. Arm yeah. loads. Um, including Mecha. Which is rather nice. And that's where we'll start with 86. Oh. Um, this is an anime that is uh, um, not for the youngins. Grim. Yeah. yeah. Um, grim. Very grim. Uh, definitely grim yeah. dark. Reminded me of the more serious Gundam series out there. Um, yeah. Definitely that vibe. Um, basic premise set in a world of. Now, I say mecha, they're, I mean mecha in the more broad sense. They're like four legged cannons, basically. Right. Um, and uh, there's a war with drones. Combat walkers, I Com guess. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so there's a war with drones, but some of the drones aren't actually drones. Um, and so all the drama thereof. Um, it's, it's pretty grim. Like, there's, you know, again, think like, uh, you know, soldiers fighting in a war where uh, no one kind of really acknowledges their existence, and there's, uh, um, you know, people die in the first episode, to put it that way. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. you, you start off the episode, like, looking at this society that seems to be, like, very prosperous, and everyone's got it's very light blue hair, very light eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They look very healthy. Yeah. And yes, I'm going somewhere with this. And they, you know, they're fighting this war, but it doesn't look like there's a war there, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So they're, they're fighting this war. And your main character, who... She is a major, and she goes through it, and she's upset about using these drones. And everyone's like, "Why are you upset using it? At using drones and drones?" And then you figure out what the drones are. Yeah, and they're and they're not people with light blue hair and very Ooh. light eyes and 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 skin that is so white that you know if they should ever actually see the real sun, they would just <laughs> you know burst into flames. Mm -hmm. But well, your but, paleness is an indication of your privilege. Uh, yeah, yeah, apparently, apparently yeah. in this world. Yeah, yeah. And, which, um, and 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 which is a clue because the, the 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 people doing the actual fighting do not look like. That. Correct. Yes, they are very tanned and yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Scarred. Well, which is how many animes do you need to see where yeah. somebody's like, oh, you went to Okinawa, you're so tan, and it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, they they yeah. make a kind of think about that. Yeah, it's unclear whether it's like actual racial cleansing at this point. Um, right. Or whether there's like just been a lot of genetic engineering on the, the populace or what's going on. Um, they don't get into that in episode one, but yeah. I'm sure they will at some point. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's going to go interestingly from here on out. I, yeah. I, I will say about the first half of the episode is like entirely focused on this young woman major, kind of her stuff going on, and it's kind of slow. Um, yeah. And th there's not much going on. It's more just here's the character, here's kind of what she's dealing with. And then the last half is more you know, introducing you to the pilots and so forth and so on. For me, it right. kind of picked up more in the last half of the episode as you're starting to get more of a feel of, oh, okay, here are kind of the characters we'll be dealing with. Right. Um, but, but just so you don't think that you're starting off this anime board, it, there's literally like, that, what, 30 second scene. Oh, gosh, uh, yeah. Yeah, where basically it's so intense that you're just like, the, the, the hell am I watching? Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Because there's this guy who's just yelling in the background. You don't know who he is. You see a point of view of somebody or something, and they're going down railroad tracks, and then suddenly they're in battle, and then 
screaming starts. And then it cuts to this very beautiful girl. <laughs> yeah, it starts with a bang in yeah. multiple senses. Well, it reminded me a lot of Ange Verge, which mm. was um, Princess of the Empire. Uh, and everybody who's like in the Empire has mana and can do like okay. mana related mm. magic stuff. Mm. And you are cast out to be like a, a robot fighter mm. if you don't have mana. And uh, everything's cool until they figure out the princess doesn't have mana. That yes. she mm. then gets basically kicked from being royalty mm. to being the scum of the earth and sent mm. to die fighting these robots. Mm -hmm. And that's what exactly this well, reminded me of. And I was yeah. like, well, well, yeah, and that whole prison scene at the end of that particular yeah. movie, I was yeah. like, I'm like, oh, we went. Yeah. There literally went there. Mm. Yeah. And Ouch. 86 is darker because you think about Anga mm. Verga, yeah. it, it's like, it's very light kind of coloration. It's very okay, bright, yeah, yeah, yeah. very yeah, poppy. Yeah, yeah. And 86 is just like, wow, once you get beyond the clean city and you mm -hmm. get to see what's going on in District 86, it's like, wow, it's just gritty grime and death. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and and as one person point, just pointed out now, dropped a cake. Yeah, and cake, yeah. and there's cake, <laughs> and cake, <laughs> and cake. Um, but I think you're absolutely right, Ginger. That, that there's that there's conformity, and you know, looking alike and so forth. There's very much a theme of the show, which is a Japanese, you know, stereotype. I think would be the right the right word for it. Like a, a common thing, common in Japanese society, and common, you know, yeah, like a common element there. So yeah, you're looking for grim, dark. Um, not just grim dark, but grim mecha. Grim. Yeah. That, that's definitely yeah. what you got uh, this season. Um, moving on, we, we go we go alphabetically, just for simplicity, not because it it uh, flows well. Um, so going, we just, <laughs> it prepares you for the next thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, Backflip, good lord! <laughs> yep. Oh my god! <laughs> ah, joyous. Oh. Um, so, oh, okay. Oh, I really god. enjoyed backflip. I, I really, <laughs> I really enjoyed backflip. Um, oh, it's, it's, dear. Uh, so I'm very proud of this. Um, I called it uh, Yuri on Matt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's, it's basically a bunch of hot guys who do rhythm gymnastics, and that's right. It. Yeah. Um, so and the CGI is nice. Yeah. I mean, they did a, yes. they did a good job mm -hmm. with the CGI. Yep. Um, they use that really very nicely for the floor exercise in a mm -hmm. darkened arena. So it's yeah. just that thing going on. And then sparingly movements that were yeah. two deed. <laughs> so basically, anytime they need to show a bunch of characters all Steve. doing complex interactions, <laughs> it's all CGI and it's all kind of from a distance. So it kind of makes sense of making everything kind of interweave. Um, and then the rest is, is basically 2D. With, as we noticed, I think one or two like 3D assists yeah. of like just using that as a reference for the 2D. But yeah. So, so these were my notes sports anime, boys gymnastics. Baseball fan becomes a gymnastics fan. Also played other sports, making perfect for gymnastics. Ugh. All right. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Steve. Yeah. You don't have any love for rhythm gymnastics. Yeah. Let me get my ribbon out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really liked it. I think it was, it was well done. Um, I also think, like, obviously there is a, um, there's almost always some kind of hints of, like, BL you know, underneath the, the surface yeah. of the, these shows. Uh, just and a little. This is just a little. Um, and I think you did a good job of kind of sprinkling those in for the fans without um, lingering, you know, without making a big right. deal of that. Where it's like, okay, if you want to pair folks up, go go for it. You know, you, here's, here's the one person blushing about somebody else. That's fine. Right. Um, but we kind of... Ship where you need to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but it's not like, okay, let's bring the, sh the, the show to a screeching halt for these scenes. So. Yeah. Well, I think certainly if you enjoyed Free, I think if you mm -hmm. enjoy Yuri on Ice, I yeah. think this is completely within your realm of, of enjoyability. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The, the, I can't say necessarily that anything we watched made me go, my gosh, they've just reinvented the genre. Mm -hmm. And these male characters <laughs> no. are like just delicious like eating cake. <laughs> no, they're just – they're fairly standard tropey kind of characters. Yep. And it's the, – the most inventive part I – 
I was impressed with was just literally the 3D. Mm-hmm. That's that's the part I was just like, wow, you guys really made some some good choices in that, and yeah. you thought about you. I don't know how much they must have watched, oh, gosh. even program getting the CGI to move that way with the fluidity that it had. So yeah. I was impressed by that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so and yeah, I completely agree. One of those if if you you know if you hear boys rhythm gymnastics. That's the anime in your head. Like, that's, that's exactly what you're going to get. You know? yeah. No surprises, yeah. but exactly that. Um, boy, can I not describe, though, Battle Athletes Victory Restart. Uh, um, so, I unironically love Battle Athletes Victory. Um, this is a, a sequel to a 90s sports franchise. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it, but again, I have no... Um, I'm incredibly biased because <laughs> <laughs> I've seen all this other stuff and I understand kind of where they're going with things and I can, I can appreciate a lot of the little stuff they're, they're, they're pulling in. Um, <clears throat> so I, I really enjoyed it, but I'm much more interested to hear what you guys thought of, of Battle Athletes. I'm not sure I, I'm not really sure I had that much of a, of a feel off of it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm kind of interested to see how the, the main girl character, like, how's she going to to interact with all these other disparate characters but i've seen so many other shows that are lapis relights comes to mind immediately mm. where okay. lapis relights is like uh K-On. it's like love live it's you know mm. you've got a group of these females that are doing a thing it could be singing it could be whatever that thing is but oh you've got this prickly personality person and how does the mm-hmm. the plucky like young ma- you know, female protagonist draw in these disparate personalities to really you know do the thing and that's and very like, much so, the other the, the previous series yeah so i mean i, I i'm i'm not i don't have a problem watching it but i'm not entirely sure that of all the freaking list of things to do. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure this is going to be like. Oh, I have to make sure this is in the top ten. Yeah, hasn't. I will certainly right. En- yeah. right. I will certainly enjoy it as I'm able to like knock some of the other things off the list, and I'm waiting. You know, I've got mm-hmm. that wait period. I've watched Tuesday the mm-hmm. newest episodes of everything I can get to, and now I have to wait till next Tuesday. Mm-hmm. This certainly would be somewhere in that. Okay. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get to this one. I, okay. I, I think I think I had watched Burning Kabaddi, and I was like, okay. no, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> and that left me with a burning desire for comedy. Mm. Oh boy. Um, so yeah, I think um, Battle of its Victory, and obviously it, it was um, not obviously. Um, it's a sports. It's a sci-fi sports anime. So it's set in a, yeah. a, a future where they're doing an Olympic style sports, but in a very sci-fi setting. So it's very Olympics esque. You know, kind of multiple different sports going on at once. Uh, or being competed on throughout the course of the, of the series, so that's the kind of vibe you're going to get. Um, all teenage girls, all competing. One thing I will, I do want to point out about this series that does interest me, that's not in the original series, is that one of the characters has an artificial hand and an artificial leg, yeah. and they've <laughs> introduced basically um, prejudice within the world against athletes who compete with artificial limbs, and so some people just don't like that, and they think, okay, are you, you know. Are you, is that a, um, a form of doping, essentially, where you have this thing and this gives right. you an advantage, it's unfair. Um, so I'm curious to see where they're going to go with that. I think that's a, that's a neat idea for this kind of a universe. Do you think they'll effectively deal with it? Or do you think it's just going to be that sort of like pop up, maybe address it a little bit and then just walk away from it to the main story? In Battle I mean, of the Victory, at least, they, they would deal with stuff like that. So, okay. you know, any sort of issue or or conflict would eventually get addressed in the show some way hmm. you know, pretty directly right. particularly yeah. the uh, the america versus russia rivalry which is still going three thousand years from now apparently y- you know so okay <laughs> it's, it's weird. um so uh yeah so yeah i thoroughly enjoyed it but whatever um uh, speaking of next one burning kabaddi um yeah comedy 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 so we were, we were talking when we were watching it. One of the, you know, the show has to do a lot because the vast majority of people have never heard of Kabaddi. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a full contact sport, um, uh, sort of tackle tag, if you will. 
um, but with rules in different different areas. And so you got to get introduced to the characters, get introduced to the sport, uh, and also get introduced to kind of the all. Um, um, uh, the kind of the premise of the show, like who's going to be doing what and all the, all that kind of stuff. So all in one episode. Oh, yeah. And they yeah. certainly accomplished all that. Um, it struck me as very sort of shonen. Um, yeah, actually, I got that vibe too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah when I wa- Go ahead. Um, when, when I was watching it and, you know, like just, just kind of going, you know, just kind of because this is, Apparently the sports anime did not grab me this week. Yeah, yeah. And and I was just kind of going through this. Now I had heard of this before because I, for my for my channel I talk about mm. certain things like that, like the Dashi mm. and things and things of that nature. So odd little games like that. So it, it's interesting. The concept is interesting. Yeah. But as they went through the whole through the whole thing, it just felt like everything was just like we're going to action, 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 action. action. Yeah. And everything's intense and everything's high you know in your face but of course they're trying to get through so much mm-hmm. through it by the end of it you're just like going oh i don't care I wonder if they're going to go to nationals at the end of it <laughs> yeah right you know gee <laughs> or if we don't get enough members will the will the program be canceled no yeah i, I what i'm really curious about is to know more about his youtube channel yeah <laughs> yeah um it's pretty over the top in 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 a very sort of um, in that shonen way, right, where, where the mm-hmm. characters are, are kind of tropey um, and, and very ridiculous, um, but that is kind of fun <clears throat> to have that in a a sport that is as kind of rugby esque as, uh, as this is. Um, but yeah, and and Ginger, yeah, and I I had problems with the main character too. Like he is, I think he's going to be divisive. People will either love him or just not care, right? It's just, it's just gonna, gonna be, folks are gonna bounce off. Yeah. That yeah, unfortunately. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely trying to watch it. It's going to be a real struggle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice, like it. Like it. nice. Struggle. Struggle. Um, <laughs> um, speaking of great struggles, we need to talk next about Cestus. Um, <laughs> oh god! Yeah, I, I swear yeah. to God, folks, there are anime that I actually did like this season, which is <laughs> we'll hitting them in a certain way. We'll, we'll get there. Trust me. Um, Cestus was oh your my. number one. <laughs> <laughs> my eyes. Berserk okay, in no. Rome. <laughs> Jeez. So okay, so the the manga, which I've never really gotten that far into. Mm. I, is actually enjoyable and and it, and it is not intense, but it's it's very it's kind of showing esque and it it leads you on a story on a trail and and you enjoy it. Yeah. Um. So as far as I've gotten with it, so and I've heard a lot of you know people who have gone farther into manga than I have mm. really enjoying this manga and you know it has a historical component that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. And so then when the, they, they started shooting, the, or, you know, the show came on and I realized that it was all CGI anime, which, you know, I'm not hep on sometimes. For a while. For a while. And then they just, and it was just really bad. It's it weird really because. Really bad. Because. Yeah. Not as bad as Hack 13, but. Mm, yeah, was, no, no. Was, not many yeah. things are as bad as that. Yeah, um, I've not seen that. That sounds like something I need to experience. Oh boy! Um, oh boy! <laughs> so oh boy. we, um, what's weird about it is that we were talking earlier about the fact that there aren't a lot of like cheap shows this season. Yeah, right. The budget in Cestus is spent in a way that I don't understand, because like the the opening yeah. couple of minutes, and then I think the opening credit sequence is all CGI, characters, everything else. And it's all, uh, I'm just going to say it, um, uh, the, re- the CGI Berserk series that everyone hates. It's kind of like that, yep. kind of yep. stiff and all that thing. Yeah. And then it's 2D, like four minutes mm-hmm. in, Yeah. kind of inexpensively done. Like, it's okay, but it's just kind of very basic, you know, character here, character there, a little bit of movement, that, that sort of forth. And it's just like, all right, and then the end credits is all stills of CGI characters. Maybe a little bit of movement in there. And it's like, I don't understand yeah. why you would 
do I? Yeah, and the flip yeah. out from the beginning CGI, the three D to the to the two D. Yeah, it's like there Very isn't different. there isn't like some kind of transitional no. thing where you're like, oh, now we've got these beautifully you know sort of like hand rendered panoramas of the city mm -hmm. and everything else, and then the CGI is kind of in there with it. It's like, nope, it just stops. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's and now it's 2D. That's the weird <laughs> like, thing. Like, yeah, there's no CGI crowds, none of that. Yeah. It's just okay. It's bizarre. Yeah, Berserk 2016. Um, yeah, it's it's very strange. It also has the disadvantages that it is um, not the most historically accurate anime I've ever seen. <laughs> no, um, it's sort of room no. soup kind of. Oh, oh. It's historically inspired. Yeah, there we yes. are. Yeah. Um, so it, it it feels very much like a. Um, a thirteen-year-old boy's vision of what Roman gladiator arenas are. You know, yeah. not a lot of research yeah. done. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, Nero. Yeah. Really? I don't yeah, know. that's 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 who we had to deal with. Yeah, it's strange. Well, just as we talked about it, it's sort of kind of like it. Remind, it's much more reminiscent of Caligula. Mm-hmm. As a child, yeah. That it is Nero yeah. as a child, yeah. <laughs> like, okay, That's strange. Yeah. Um, and all, yeah, I love that. And maybe this is kind of a joke, but um, all of the like uh, Roman elite are all like blonde haired and blue eyed, because of course, when you're make, you know when you're doing a live action movie about Rome, they're all British, right? You always right. ask British people yeah. for them, so. That, that might just be kind of like, well, ha, 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 I don't know. But it's always kind Are you of saying like, Sir eh. Derek Jacobi as, as Claudius <laughs> was not accurate? Exactly. Oh. I Blasphemer. Mm. I'm going to revoke your, your British Museum license. Don't get me wrong. That is an amazing miniseries, right, Claudius? Yes, it oh is. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, especially you go back and you realize, oh, this is like three sets. Like, what they oh. They um, did a lot. Yeah. With a very little. Yeah. All British acting. I mean, oh, yeah. they, they, they can do it. Um, so yeah, Cestus, um, okay. bit of a disappointment for me, um, but who knows. Uh, moving on to the combatants will be dispatched. Um, and this is kind of an interesting one. Um, oh, you've got oops, X sorry. arm. Yeah. What? X arm. Oh, uh, I got the wrong image. Wait a second. Showed I, up. I will fix that while we... Uh, we, we switch over. Um, uh, there we go. So, combat will be dispatched. Um, we were talking, this is kind of a spot the trope anime. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a whole bunch of ridiculous things all thrown together, which I enjoyed a lot. Like, I, I found it fun just in that ridiculous anime, you know, element. Yeah, you take this for what it is and you will enjoy right. it. It is. It was nice because this is what I've, followed up Cestus with was with this <laughs> one and I was just like ah yes I am entertained now. <laughs> yes, yes yeah, you are yeah. huh. well I mean and that's the thing that's very nice about it is it certainly <laughs> like watch that episode it is certainly by no means somebody being like this is my contribution to history <laughs> right. it's like right. no this is like committee sitting down be like what kind of stupid stuff can we throw into an anime let's just sure do it mm -hmm. and it's like that's the joy of it it's like it's it knows it's an idiot show and it's great for that <laughs> yeah yep um yeah uh, fun action adventure yeah. um kind of a thing um uh, I do appreciate that the uh, that uh, Alice keeps the shotgun. Apparently, that that, that continues yeah. to be her thing. Um, so yeah, just just ridiculous sort of sci-fi fantasy mishmash, you know, craziness um, all thrown together. Um, yeah, won't it has a, it, it, it has an Evil Dead feel to it. Yeah, it yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Totally. Um, moving from stupid fun to Neither of those things. Don't toy with me, Ma Miss Nagatoro. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Oh. Oh dear. Oh dear, my. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I, you know, I. Okay, so I wanted to like this show, and I never read, the, you know, never read the manga or anything like that, and I've heard about this, but I, I'm kind of looking at my notes, and I'm. I watched it and I was just like, are we trying to do reverse bullying? Are we doing, are we, you know, is this, 
why you know yeah. it's you know <laughs> almost almost why i mean beforehand you, you, you know combatants must must perish you know you get the idea that this is silly and fun and whatever you just take it for what it is this one is clearly supposed to go somewhere but you're like but why does it exist why why is this girl doing this to this guy just poor guy and i'm like totally sympathize with this guy he's just, yeah. just wants to be left alone mm -hmm. for god's sakes girl leave him alone it's, but you know she's just pushing those buttons and it's just yeah. like going why why are we doing this what is the message here and that's the thing so the premise is you know essentially group of girls see this guy in the library one of them goes over and starts picking on him and just continues picking on him that's that's the entire episode and that's basically the plot of the story is that she decides to pick on this guy constantly yeah. He, he he is and, now her target for bullying, period. And 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 the weird thing is, at the end of it, you realize that he's a masochist, and he's mm -hmm. like, you know, oh yeah, I I just enjoy talking to you. Yeah, dude, she's smacking you into rivers. She, yeah, like yeah, I mean, you know, it's like, not just like, psychological abuse; it's physical, physical abuse, abuse as well. <laughs> you know, and she's just like getting up in your grill, and then the ending. And credits, you realize that how much more you, we were all into for this, and we're just like, well, like, there's like, you know, things where she's like, you didn't draw, you didn't draw my inside lines, you didn't solve, yeah, the, 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 you didn't draw the territory, mm -hmm. and it's just like, yeah, what? what? Mm -hmm. Stop, please. Yeah, I don't yeah. see it taking a high road after this point. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird thing. Um, yeah. yeah, the kind of sad attempt at Sundere, where it's like you're kind of missing the point of the of, of that and just making the, the character cruel as yeah. opposed to just kind right. of standoffish. Um, it's very bizarre. And yeah, like, like I mentioned, I've, I've read the, the first volume of the manga and it was just that all the way through. And I was like, it's just it's just bullying. That's all it is. And yeah. and, you, and the thing of it is, is that you if if they just did it just for a little bit during the course of the episode mm -hmm. and they had other things going on that made you understand that there was more of a right. story, which right. there's got to be. Yeah. Um, but it's that all the way through it. And I'm like, my God, she's a poster child for Ritalin. I mean, yeah. please yeah. don't give her a pill, mainline it. I mean, my mm -hmm. God, you know, yeah. and then, you know, like every time, like she, you see the close of her face and her eyes are like, you know, they're, you know, yeah. different sizes. The pupils and are the like psycho, whacked out. Yeah. The psycho look, you're just going, oh, okay. What high pitched voice nonsense are we going to? Sam Pi. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, this is one of the anime that I really want to uh, uh, recut into a horror trailer. Um, yes, it, just, it, it would work. It's very much what it feels like. Yep. Um, uh, it's it's. I um. I am creeped out enough, but you know what? I'm gonna end up doing this like I did for redo of Healer. Where after that first episode of Redo of Healer, I was like, oh, hard no. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, no, you know what? Let's just see where we're going to try and go with this and okay. see if I can if I can understand why you're doing this. So I'm mm -hmm. going to keep trying to slog Nagatoro a little bit more. Thank you for taking just, it for us. Yeah, to see how, how are you going to redeem this? Please, yeah, yeah please know? tell me how this turns out. Because yeah. I, I really do feel that there is something things supposed oh, yeah. to be yeah. here and, and, and happen and there's some type of message and mm -hmm. you know Yeah. Yeah. Something. And to be clear, there's an but amazing I'm not it now. There's an amazing live action movie and I'll try to remember it and, and, and post it later. Um that's basically the, kind of this concept um where the the premise is and it's not in a physical way, but a a a sadist and a masochist meet as teenagers. Um, the boy is a masochist, she is a sadist. Um, she rejects him, he just keeps showing up and just you know, won't, take, won't accept that rejection. And she just keeps you know, making his life more and more miserable and he just keeps taking it and taking it because that's his love. And uh, the movie does an amazing job of showing how horribly, horribly messed up that is for both of them. Um, and it has this perfect ending. And I love, love, love that movie because it takes that concept and presents it as a, like, Shakespearean tragedy. You know, it's like, yeah. this is not something that should, you should be laughing at. This is not something, yeah. whatever. It's, you know, this, this, is a, this is a thing. And unfortunately, some people fall into these relationships. Yeah. Um, and so if you can, you know, it can be handled well. This does not seem like that. <laughs> yeah. No, it does not. Yeah. No. But like yeah. I said, I'm gonna. I. I. 
I want to know how you how you redeem this because yeah. there's no way in hell presenting this concept for an anime to a committee. Yeah, <laughs> had, I mean, not everybody in that committee yeah. could yeah. be how do you pitch struck this? insane <laughs> at one moment. It's unlikely, so it's got to be doing something. So I'm gonna hopefully be oh, able to stomach oh. enough of this to see where it goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just gonna be mad if in the next. Over the next week, I suddenly wake up in a cold sweat, and I hear the you know the echoing voice of senpai. <laughs> Is this you, senpai? Is this you? You couldn't be this. Yes. Hey. Wow. Um, Ginger in the chat says probably the messiest series of the season in terms of its premise. It's gonna. Uh, it has some stiff competition. I will admit, it may well be the messiest. Yeah. But this is a season. It's with up there, several, though. Yeah, um, but before we'll we get, get to there, there. We'll, we'll get there. But before <laughs> we get to there, something a lot, a lot more, um, more fun and innocent. Uh, Dragon goes house hunting. Uh, <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. Love uh, it. Only elf whose specialty is, is construction is and real estate. <laughs> <laughs> Real wow. estate. My dad was a real estate appraiser, so oh yeah, yeah. You know, so like, I was watching it, and I was just like, going, "Oh my god, this is like, <laughs> oh my god." Uh, and I'm just watching it, and that's uh, okay. So this is in the same vein as I'm a spider, not so much mm. for me. In yeah. that it's you know it's this 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 nice, cute little thing. This poor dragon doesn't watch it. What like sleeps and doesn't watch the egg, and the egg gets taken, and now he's kicked out of the house, and he has to. It's like a fantasy world with very real world concepts, you know. It's like, all right, you're booted. Oh, I have to find a place. And then everywhere he goes, there's like, we're going to eat you. No, we're going to make weapons out of you. I, and he's like thinking like, okay, I'm going to die, but at least there'll be a cool sword at the end of this, you know. Yeah. And, uh, I loved it. I loved Except it. for his negative seven luck. <laughs> I know, right? He's not going to be a cool sword with that kind no. of luck. And he can't fly in that scene where he thinks he's flying. Yeah. It's glorious. I love it. And it, it's just like you see the point of what you're just like, zoom. And you're like, like yep. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. One thing I really appreciate is how it's a very silly premise, and they are very much executing on that silliness. Where it's just, we're gonna have fun with this idea. Go forward, but also like I really like the um, fantastical environments. Yeah. Where yeah. it's not just okay. Here's a forest and here's a desert. Like you see lots of different homes and lots of different kinds of styles of fantasy environments, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, yeah, it'll be a it'll be a fun show to just dial into after watching eighty six or. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Definitely. And definitely. I'll be like, oh, I think I need some dragon house hunting after that. Mm-hmm. And yeah. actually, one of the best scenes is the slimes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In the scene, and they're, and it's just like any any just like couple, like you know, newlywed couple find their first home, and they're just gushing over this one layer that they find, and yeah. you know, it's, oh, it's, I can't, it's I can't, great. I can't. It's it's yeah, great. It's yeah. worth the watch. It's, it it is. Yeah. Um. I can't think of a transition for this one because what we have to talk about next is Fairy Um <laughs> and uh, <sighs> it's uh, yeah. it's it's the, the one I actually took time on. Oh jeez. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it Fairy Maru is kind of interesting to me because of how heavily stylized it is. Um, Very. Hot elf guys are sent to Earth by a goth lowly princess kind of yes queen. Um, goth lowly princess goth and queen. her geek queen queen mm-hmm. and her sebastian like butler exactly yep. um and these fairies to collect right. attachments to collect attachments. Nobody explains what the hell an attachment is um whereupon they all and and when they like have to deal with something they all enter like madoka magical world of all yeah. of the weird like eyes and cutouts and all that kind of stuff um there's a lot <laughs> going on this. <laughs> it just throws a lot at you. Yeah. Um, um, I thought watching it, because um, I, I, I was like, okay, this is clearly like a video game or <clears throat> it's, you know, some giant pop idol franchise or something. And no, it's this. It's this anime TV series. It's it is, an original it is concept. all it is. 
it's BTS the movie yeah. or the, the TV show. <laughs> yeah. Basically, yeah. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. It seems like it though, but so as soon as it comes up and you and you see the force, they're naked. Course, and yeah, right, you right. know and, and so i'm like going oh, oh okay this is a boy love thing i guess and it's boylish it is in mm-hmm. and and they they do their i'm like okay it's a reverse it's a guy they're coming to earth as mm-hmm. the other way around and they get down there and then you never uh, and they even talk about okay we have to get these attachments what are attachments and none of them can figure it out nobody yeah. knows what it is yeah and until the end you, you, at the end of the first episode and um and they just and you know it's it's really not my dem. I'm I am so not in the demographic for this guy. I, I mean, it's it's just like I like no, I'm not a screaming fourteen year old girl. There's this the, the one scene that made me go, oh good lord. The, the one scene that made me go, go good lord, was when the two of the phrase, the one with the, the really long silver hair and the only really short pixie hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're saying he's drawing or painting something. The scene and. The oh, the student council president? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The little one is just like, oh, you paint so well. And he goes, all I want well, is simply drawing beauty because all of life is beautiful. And the hair goes <laughs> bang. And, and then the little pixie guy goes, oh, but you're beautiful. And I'm like, bah. you know, he's like, <laughs> no, we can't do this. But I made the mistake. I was telling the, the guys before this made the mistake of like when they show the cards so they're giving cards that they give out to people they're supposed mm-hmm. to give out these cards and for a brief second you see the card and it has an actual qr code so for some godforsaken reason i screenshot it and i was just like this can't possibly be click yep it's a thing it's so eve's quest for knowledge for, for, for knowledge <laughs> and this is the thing that i spent time on of course you know nothing else this is what i spent the time <laughs> on. i went into i went into bar f land and mm-hmm. you know it was it's it is literally that's all this is it's all about the show mm-hmm. that's it's from from beginning to end soundtracks it's basically events, the official website right but you're saying yeah, yeah okay yeah, it's an official website and it's just like i'm like going oh god because they're all sitting around in the cafe going, no. And it's like, nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah. It sells. It that. sells. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, well, I guess there must be a point because I actually went that far. To yeah. Hey, there we go. Stupid website. <laughs> but no, it's, it's funny. Cause it's, it's the, the kind of premise, uh, the kind of, of show in terms of the, I guess the psychology they're going after of trying to understand attachments and deal with attachments. Again, it's sort of a uh, magical boy show. Right. Um, I right. could see myself getting into it because of that and the the way they're addressing, okay, people have to deal with issues uh, and the whole cyberbullying aspect of the first episode. Right. Um, but there's... Which, which... which, by the way, did you find the resolution really that... Oh, it was problematic. It was very problematic ending. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, yes. And, and that's the thing is that I was I was very intrigued by those elements of it, but the the first episode threw so many things at me. Um, there's just so much going on, so much unexplained, and it doesn't feel like it's leading you on. It feels like oh, we just didn't have time to explain what this thing was. Right. Um, that it just um, yeah it just didn't come together for me. Um, you know, and classic one of those things. If, if, if someone came back and said, "Oh no, no, this goes places. Like this totally goes places," I'd be willing to come back to it and give it a try. Um, it just felt a little. I don't. Know, sloppy is maybe not the right word, but just I don't know. Uh, the, the takeaway that I got from the end of the first episode, which I, which I know is not what I was supposed to take away with, but that's what I got was it was as if they were trading one suicide attempted suicide right. for another. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, at the end, and it's just kind of like, does that kind of defeat the whole purpose of why you guys are here? Yeah, yeah. And that's again, I, I, well, I you, oh, you, you know, save, save the nice person, <clears throat> and the bad person gets their just desserts, right? Right. It's like, hmm. Right. I wonder. Um, hmm. We'll see. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> not a super huge like magical girl kind of person, so it to me, it really doesn't matter whether it's a group of magical boys or a group of magical girls. Hmm. It's okay. You know, I'm yeah. I'm worried with it. I'm yeah. not 
it was an interesting watch. I, I could say I've experienced it now, and and you know, as I said before, you know, before it's boylicious, and that's that's great. Mm-hmm. That's super. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, moving to a show that is very much not boylicious and uh, is much more clear about what it is. Farewell, my dear Kramer. Um, yes, which is the girls' soccer anime yeah. of the season. Um, lovely art style on this. Um, I really like the the character designs. Very s- simple, very clean. Yep. Um, and it's about uh, a group of girls. I'd be freshmen in high school, um, starting a a soccer club in in their high school. Um, it deals with the fact that. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the popularity of, of girls' soccer took kind of a nosedive in recent years. And so a lot of the soccer team, the girls' soccer teams in, and apparently this is a real thing, um, a lot of the, the girls' soccer team, soccer clubs in, in various schools kind of had to close. Um, and so obviously this is a, a, you know, girls who really believe in girls' soccer and are trying to keep that moving. Um, I do appreciate the fact that... Um, it is following a lot of tropes um, of typical sports anime, but there is no one super player, right? right? A bunch of the girls are good, and they're all kind of fighting their synergies with each other. And there's obviously like a you know a, a main girl, um, but she is not this you know absurdly you know amazing girl who's going to carry the entire team, right? Um, so that, that's nice. Um, and yeah, I, I no idea who Kramer is. Um, I'm gonna look that up now and see if there's there's more info about that. But well, that's why it, it answered Kira and said, "We'll find out in episode 12." Yeah, exactly. So you have to watch the whole thing. <laughs> um, I liked the character facial designs because it reminded me, like as I, as I said, we were watching it. it. Reminded me of Your Lie in April, Cowrie's mm. kind of face, the way that her eyes are done and the way that Arama's character is done. It's that that openness of their facial expressions makes it very nice to see as they're experiencing stuff and you see those emotions kind of move across their faces Mm -hmm. that it's just it's done in a way that's very accessible and i i really enjoyed that um i i I don't really follow sports anime but Mm -hmm. damn i kind of like this one yeah (laughs) this kind of this kind of neat i like to see the interaction the different uh you know the two enemy girls sue and so Something like that. Those two. Um, How they end up going to the same high school because they they sort of so empathized with the girl in a losing Mm -hmm. match, and there therefore she's like, I want to be. She's like me. I'm going there. Yeah. And and the other girl's like, No, I wanted to go to the one that was the better team. Yeah. (laughs) Like. No, now now you guys are starting someplace and you're working your way up and you're going to go to Nash. No. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that part out of it. Yeah. yeah. They're going to go to regionals at least. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I just looked it up. Um, uh, Favorite my, my dear Kramer is, is, was originally a manga by Naoshi Arakawa. Guess what he made before Favorite my, my dear Kramer? Your Lie in April. <gasps> Ah, mm-hmm. all comes around. Oh, so. good on me. My brain remembered there things. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a, that was a fun one. I won't have to poke it with a Q-tip to wake it up. Right. <laughs> 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 but, yeah. Um, I, also, I do want to call out, and again, this, this may sound creepy. It doesn't mean like, um, it does not concentrate on the girls' bodies. Right. Yes. There's not a lot yes. of like TNA shots or anything like that. They're just girls. They don't have huge breasts all the time. Right. It's just very much freshman girls. Um, JJ Big Brain, totally. Um, and then we move over to a, a sh- uh, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a show, Full Dive, um, aka, and I'm gonna try to get the the, the full title here, um, Full Dive, the ultimate next gen Full Dive RPG is even Bleepier than real life. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed this a lot. Um, I actually really enjoyed this one. Uh, so basically, the main character goes to a... Um, um, or plugs into a, a, a VR game that is the ultimate realistic VR game. Um, and so everything, like... Everything has consequences. Like, everything goes, you know... Um, and things like... And they haven't like, talked about this in great detail, but, like... If 
the, the, the next town is 20 days away. You have to spend 20 days in real time walking there to get there. There's no fast travel. Like, everything is, like, realistic. Um, and so then they have to, de- and he has to deal with the consequences of his actions, which are unfortunate. Yeah, no resets. No resets. No, no yes. restarts, no nothing. Mm-hmm. And bad things happen. Um, and so on the one hand, it, it, it has a lot of those elements of a, um, it's definitely a comedy um, set in kind of thing, some fan service. Um, what I appreciate is that it felt like they were taking the dramatic turns lightly enough that yes, there are you know bad things happen. Yes, he 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 does things that are you know one should not do in these situations. It, it's nothing uh, pervy. Um, right. That I um, I could kind of laugh along with it throughout the entire episode, um, and so it just felt like it was a you know extreme concept done for comedy is what it felt like right. for me. It, it, I didn't get to see it, but from <clears throat> the description of the way you described it, was it seems like um, uh, the Penn and Teller video game where you're driving to Vegas <laughs> overnight. Desert bus. And you have yes. to play the game yeah. in real time. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> now, see, I liked seeing it with others mm-hmm. because when I watched it earlier this week, I was never going to get near this again. Really? And I, and that's sad because I've watched now the second episode. <laughs> okay. But it's it, it sort of it gave me that powerful sort of dojinshi moment where it's like you know what I would rewrite this and this is exactly oh, what I would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like I started I, it, you know what I mean? It's like I've bought games and mind you, he paid like an exorbitant amount of money for a crap ten year old game. Mm. But I've bought games. I've spent 50 bucks on games, gotten them home, and tried to play them for like a couple of weeks. And not been able to make any progress. Mm-hmm. Panzer General 2 mm. comes immediately to mind. I yeah. could not get past the very first phase mm. where literally you have some very basic uh, units that are, should be stronger than the opposition. Mm. And I got wiped every single time. Mm. And you have to complete that first part uh. to move on. Mm-hmm. I never could complete the first part. Mm-hmm. So I... I, the game's somewhere in the basement, and mm-hmm. it's been there for 20 years. Mm-hmm. Because I, that, I recognized I was not getting any joy out of it. I was getting increasingly angry and frustrated. And the end result was I did not enjoy what I was doing. Mm-hmm. So this, where it's like everything goes dramatically wrong for mm-hmm. what he's doing. <laughs> and as opposed to being like, that's it, pull the plug, throw it in the box, and I'm, you know, I'm out 100 bucks. Right. Heap soldiers on. So I'm glad I watched it with all of you guys that, like, give me, okay, like, I need to back away from my experience with bad (laughs) games. I have to stop projecting me onto this because I would rage quit this in a a heartbeat. And then go back to Riona and be like, you either going to give me a store credit and I'm going to buy something else or I'm going to have some serious issues because this game sucks. (laughs) So I'm, I'm. Now that I've seen episode two, I'm, mm. I'm going to dial back out of the rage. <laughs> I'm back into the part where I can enjoy this. Um, yeah. Because there are some very amusing moments in the second episode oh, cool. that, Brent, I, th- I think you're going to adore. Okay. It's awesomely funny. All right. Um, so that, you know, again, having the crowd experience does help me to dial into, like, a more neutral zone. Mm-hmm. and. I think I can see where I can enjoy more out of this. Sure. Yeah. Um, all right. So we've talked about full dive. Uh, we get to move on to Higehiro. Um, AKA after being rejected, I shaved and took in a high school runaway. Which is and a title in and of itself. <laughs> um, this is an interesting show. Um, it's a basic premise. Um, salary man gets drunk. He looks to be late 20s, maybe 30s, something along those lines. Um, and they, they mentioned at some point that he's like assistant um, manager, assistant, you know, he, he's of rank. Assistant project, assistant somebody. Pro- yeah. yeah. And he, um, uh, he's walking home drunk. 
uh, after being rejected by his by his uh, uh, by a, a girl woman, um, and sees a high school girl just sitting by the side of the road. Um, she has nowhere to go, um, and she uh, offers herself to him in exchange for a the night for lodging for lodging, um, and he goes, uh, I no, uh, but also oh something's going on here. And so he ends up inviting her back home so she'll be off the street at least for the night. Um, they, um, uh, they go to sleep. Nothing happens. Um, yeah. Separately. Separately, yes. Yeah, se separately. separately, exactly. Well, separately, um, yes. Yes, yes. And um, it, basically the premise is it, it turns out she's made several bad decisions in her life. He realizes that she's she needs a little bit of direction and so he decides to let her stay with him basically room and board in exchange for like doing chores and so forth um just kind of temporarily until like he's he's clearly it's kind of like until you realize that you need to go home you know right. i'm going to kind of keep you here until you kind of um, uh, figure all that stuff out that th that said that said it's a 30 year old uh. man who ha is keeping this teenage girl at home um again nothing physical between them and i do appreciate the fact that like they, he says not for times, the like she tries no not for like she, well, that's, the, yeah. that's one of the things like she's she's totally okay with that and she's clearly done that before um but like but he she puts her in an interesting position as probably knowing more th things yeah. let's just call it things, <laughs> things. Uh <-huh. laughs> um she probably knows more things in the period of time that she's been away from home that he hasn't experienced in his entire 30 she, years. She's probably had a lot of experience. Um, yeah. 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 Um, and again, I appreciate the fact that he says multiple times not into that. Like, no, not physically attracted to that at all. Um, he finds her, for lack of a better word, cute in a, you know, young person, high school girl way, right? Um, Almost like an Emoto. Almost like a little right. sister. Well, actually, it, it feels very much like father and daughter, right? right? Where, like, you know, I, 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 I care for you. Um, but it, it doesn't stop the, you are keeping a high school girl at home who is a runaway, and it's just, I, I can't get past that for myself. Which, they have him read an article that says local man arrested <laughs> for, so for man like, arrested. kidnapping a <laughs> high school yeah. girl. Like, oh, crap. I do like the way that they presented it. The he has more than just being sort of empathetic to her situation. Mm -hmm. When he's going to buy her clothes, mm -hmm. he is shrewd enough to understand that she has been achieving uh, places to stay and food, etc., by doing things, mm -hmm. and that she is. She is now, uh, I hate to say conditioned, but that's her yeah. response mm -hmm. as you've done X for me and I will do Y. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he says to her, your job is, I, I work hard. I'm gone all day. Mm -hmm. Your job, your Y to my X yeah. is you take care of the house, you cook, you clean, you do everything to make sure the place is nice and fine. That's the exchange. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be the why, physical, why, why? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be, yeah. you get this lodging for me and food, and you care for the place, and that's the equivalency of exchange. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Yeah. And if you try to do anything else, you try to seduce me again, I will kick you out. Mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, you've taken an extremely creep-worthy concept, yeah. and you've taken a... He's made a bright line in the first couple of episodes. Mm -hmm. I've seen through this to episode okay. two, yeah. first couple of episodes. How this fleshes out by the time you hit episode 12 is yeah. there a romantic love thing do they meet mm -hmm. 20 years later and who knows yeah so when i was watching this okay so the, the first part where he gets rejected by the girl mm -hmm. and she's just like i haven't seen this guy for five years so uh, why would i i, I was just kind of like thinking like you know well she's had a dinner with you you just paid dinner for her and it, you know whatever mm -hmm. so you know he gets drunk and and he's being loud and irresponsible with his friend and yeah. another bar and he's coming home and, and he sees her, the, the teen sitting there. And, you know, just as it's described, we go through this. Now, in real life, here's what would have happened. In real life, he would have been like, done that. And, you know, maybe he's being, you know, 
dice mm -hmm. and you know saying okay i'm really watching for the night as soon as they turn the corner about three big guys would have come out <laughs> <laughs> taking his wallet mm -hmm. taking his you know roll he would have gotten rolled yeah and yeah. um so that, that's if you report but, this we'll 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 tell the cops that you tried to like kidnap this girl like, oh. yeah. yeah but as as we're going through this through through the episode and he's he's doing this thing like like y'all are pointing out that he's like saying no this is what this is, you're doing this for this i'm not into you i'm not that doesn't do it for me and all this and we get to the end where he goes yeah she's i'm not into young bodies like that and i'm uh, you know but i do find her cute to me this whole thing is i think he's protesting a little too much this is where the creep factor comes in for me mm. i think he's just making that line that he doesn't cross not her mm -hmm. but for himself mm -hmm. and then he's trying the to line convince is himself already, of it no, no, yeah and the line is already eroding itself mm. at, by the end of the episode okay. and i'm just kind of like and the whole thing i'm just like because the whole premise of this is it's 25 to 30 year old guy with a 17 year old the thing you do like at first when i was like oh wow this is gonna be a really short anime because he asked for the id and he's just like okay mm -hmm. i'm gonna try and, and and then he says he can't find the parents i'm like no come on dude come on yeah no there's something going on here i i think this is, it just totally it reminded I, I, me I, a bit of bunny drop right like two people learning to live together yeah right? and what i hope is that this is bunny drop the anime and not bunny drop the manga yeah, yeah right that would like it's just let's, <laughs> you know is it a, a nice you know but mm. if it went mm -hmm. time skip yeah so mm -hmm. five years in the future so mm -hmm. whatever happens you know suppose there's this great you know epiphany that she has and mm -hmm. she says you know what you're right I yeah. have to go home. Mm -hmm. She goes home. His life moves on. He, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't meet anybody else, whatever. Yeah. And then five years later, now she's an adult. He's just a little, you know, he's mm -hmm. five years older. So he's 35. Yeah. She's five years older. And they meet up again. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, it's not nearly as creepy as, as Usagi Drop. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Totally. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And that would, be, that would be sweet. But I have no idea if that's where this is going to go. You know, right. So. So so that so, premise, so at the beginning of this. <laughs> so so John, you just put this into beautiful girls territory. You ever seen that movie? Really? No. Before? Okay. Um, Timothy Hutton, Natalie Portman. Timothy Hutton's in. Uh, he comes back home. Mm. Um, you're kind of like a high school reunion kind of thing going on. Mm. And the new next door neighbor to where his dad and his brother live is this new family and this young girl, Natalie Portman. She's like. This is like right after she did professional, mm, okay. and uh, oh, for a couple of years, wow. yeah, okay, that's yeah. how young she is. Throughout the whole movie, there's a relationship that's going on where there's mm. attraction, and Timothy Hunt and his character is like, "This is never going to happen." You know, you're you're this age, and mm -hmm. I'm this age, but darn, you're cool, and mm. you know, I want to kind of look out after you, and you know, that while I'm here, and you know, this, that, and the other thing. But then there's a part in the movie where he he says he says he's talking to his best friend from high school as they're getting drunk. He goes, "What if? What if? You know, in six years she'll be eighteen, and I'll be in my late thirties, and that'll be okay, right? Right?" And you're just like going, you realize that no, mm -hmm. it's still not right. Mm -hmm. it's still not right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just not doing my mic. Yeah, it's good. yeah, it, it's. Uh, yeah, it's it's tough because, it, and one of the reasons is like I really. It's beautifully animated. Um, yes. They do a yes. lovely job with the personalities of the characters. It feels very, not just grounded, but it it, it feels like, um, the characters' reactions are thought through, right? Like, right. you know. What he does on that night, he's drunk, kind of, he's not quite thinking things through, but he's not doing in insanely stupid things, right? Right. Um, and so all, the, all those pieces, like, okay, I, 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 you know, I can imagine this happening, right? Um, but just that premise, it's just so hard to jump over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, fair enough. Um, moving on to something 
much easier to grasp, much <laughs> less problematic. I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed out my level. Yeah. So cute. Yes. Um, so <laughs> I, I do appreciate the premise of an office lady who literally dies on the job. Um, and just like, eh, this is literally works yourself to death. Um, yep. and, uh, reincarnates in a, a world. Actually, I think reincarnates as a, an immortal 17 year old girl. Yep. Um, no. And thanks to card captor Sakura. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Ding. Ding. yeah. Um, Why does God need a magical girl yeah. bond? I don't know. <laughs> oh, what does God need with a starship? I mean, come on. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, and so uh, protagonist decides, okay, I'm just going to take it easy. I'm going to do minimal amount of work I need just to, to, to keep myself going, just have a nice, easy life. Um, and so she goes out, she kills some slimes just for kind of cash, um, does that every day for 300 years because she's immortal. Um, Roughly 25 slimes a day. 365 <laughs> days a year, or a, a days a, a year, mm -hmm. and 300 years, yeah. Mm -hmm. Times four experience points each, and guess what happens? Um, she ends up at level 99. Um, and so, yeah, hilarity ensues, obviously, you know. Her, uh, her reputation starts um, getting out there, and I thought this would turn into something more like, um, and I'm, I'm trying to think of it, um, but a show where it would be her dealing with various problems in her life, people coming in, her kind of rejecting them, you know, all that kind of that kind of kind of thing. Where it would just be kind okay. of her and bouncing off of various adventures and you know, mage, evil mages showing up and so forth. Right. And then the dragon shows up, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, uh, ends kind of predictably, um, and then the dragon shows up again um, as red-haired lowly maid, um, who is now going to live with her and do all of her work for her. Um, and so you're starting to get the, the, the sort of female harem uh, coming around her, much like Kumu 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 Bear, which, John, yep. you very yep. accurately pointed out. Um, and Traveling Witch. Traveling and Traveling Witch, Witch has, yeah, has a little orbit of, of girls as well. Mm -hmm. All the um, way down to the giant hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, giant hat. Like, jeez. Um... But yeah, it, this very much feels like a light, fun anime to yeah. just, you know, not pass the time, but just it, it, it's not going to tax you greatly, but right. make you laugh. It's visually appealing. It's it's yeah. just a cute premise, and it's ah, kind of nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when when you're done watching the creepy guy, the seventeen year old girl, and the yeah. Mecca you know, piloted by unwanted, by the unwanted and things like that. And, you know, sports anime that you don't care for. Then, you know, this is a very nice, very nice. You lighten it up this with that. Lighten it up. I, I think part of what I really liked about it was, was that it doesn't immediately set off into the adventure. There's not a serious yeah. about it. There's not, you know, it's, it's very much. And, and, and I can totally relate to, to what she wants, which is leave me the hell alone. A slow Let me life. Live a light, a slow, lazy life. Mm -hmm. Because I would very much love to live a lazy, slow life right now. Yeah. But, yeah. But, you know, being able to do that. And then when she levels up and she's leveled up, right? She's maxed out. So she has all these powers and she's figuring out that she has these powers. But we don't have to go through the multiple episodes of her trying to figure out how to master yeah. each one of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, so she can just go. Oh, I can do this. So if I do this thing, but da but da but ah, oh, hey, it worked. Great, right, great. Mm -hmm. So it's just, just fun. Just yeah. nice and fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, she better pull something out of the hat, though. <laughs> yeah, I just. <laughs> hey, Rook, want to see me pull a rabbit out of the head? <laughs> oh, <cat. laughs> oh, um, a show that is not fun in the same way, but really, really interesting is Joran, the Princess of Snow and Blood. Yeah. A show set in an alternate historical yeah. Japan. Um, the 64th mm -hmm. year of the Meiji era, 1931. So basically, yeah. um, Japan um, uh, continued with the shogunate. 
Um, there's no prime minister. Mm -hmm. um, the nation of Japan is um, st is a, a world power. There was no World War um, uh, well one there, or two. Yeah, we, well, this is before one. World War II, War Two, but yeah, right. um, yeah. There, there's none of that, um, and so. Japan remains this very traditional country in a lot of ways, while still having a lot of, of external sort of technology that sort of worked its way into their cars and such. Yeah, the weird. I missed what they called the power source they discovered. Um, the the dragon vein is what they dragon call vein. it in the Wikipedia. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so this this thing, and they have these these awesome like suspended cable cars on these giant red things. It's really cool. Um, yeah. But the um, let's talk about the art style for a minute. Love it. Yeah. Man. Love it. Yeah. That first segment that you get yeah. and in the title sequence and it's that animation and yep. I don't know how other, how else to describe it and it's just you know, when it blurs over the mouth and you yeah. see the yeah. fangs and things that, that kind of disappear and you and just how the blue contrasts everything yeah. it's almost like chalk like really finely done chalk drawing yeah, very much and so. it's just and it's just so appealing it just grabs you instantly and which i thought it was stuff. digitally rendered really because it. just how like just particularly what you know just ah wow mm -hmm. kind of amazing yeah it was done yeah saturated reds just the the red yeah. is yeah. just like and no, it's like, no, I only no. realized now, it's like, do you, was there daylight in any of that first episode? Wow, that's an interesting question. I don't remember it was any. snowing? Yeah. And we're in the red light district at night? Yeah. I, there was a small slice of daylight when she is in the bookstore. Okay, yeah. yeah and yeah. her friend yeah. is talking to her and she's looking mm. through the window. But even then, it's almost like daylight through pre-snow clouds mm. where it's that mm. filtered light. So everything is this mm -hmm. really muted lighting. And yet, some of the stuff is so incredibly sharp mm -hmm. for that low light level. Mm -hmm. It's just like, wow. Yeah. Um, so, Captain Lazarus, it's not a it's not a vampire show, although there are altered beasts. I think they call them something like those like changelings. Yeah. They call them in the Wikipedia. So there are people who trans yeah. transform. Um, yeah. But like, but it, it very much feels like a vampire show. In yeah. fact, if you've seen Blood the Last Vampire, that sort of you know very desaturated yeah, in some places, okay. oversaturated yeah. in others, kind of that sort of visual style, of roughly. Um, yeah, it's fascinating visually. Uh, they also, I really appreciate it. It's one of those shows that like, there's, n there's no exposition. No one sits down and says, as you know, Bob, 48 years ago, you know, it is just characters interacting right. and talking and explaining. You kind of have to understand. Which we, they, they, that is a particularly choice thing they did because when they meet with their handler, yeah, whoever it is. Right, that was the yeah. perfect point for exposition. Be mm -hmm. like, well, I'm glad I've gathered you here. Yeah. You know, it's like, but no. No. Nope. It's just, it just, it's moving along. Yeah. And you're like, mm -hmm. okay, you know, I'm in for the ride, in for penny, yes. in for pound. I guess I see where this goes. <laughs> Which allows for a moment like when the, you the... first meet Elena and her client. Yep. Yeah. Where it's like, what, what, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just it's just the way that they the the story just moves without having you know everything explained. Okay, so you have a narration that tells you when it is, mm -hmm. and a little bit about what this really odd thing you saw right before, mm -hmm. and then it goes on into the bookstore, and you you know you notice that there's something different, something else going on, and then you it goes back to the city. Where you see people trying to write graffiti on the wall and getting caught, then being taken away by the secret police. Mm -hmm. None of this is actually like explained to you by the narrator or anything right. like that. It's just done. And then, and then when you get to the point where the you know the they go, okay, well we're going to meet at the place to meet with the guy. You have no idea what that means. Mm -hmm. yeah. You go there, and then you come to find you're in a brothel. And then you see the scene and you're just like, oh, okay. <laughs> we went there and okay, we're having this conversation while the John is like there. And then, mm -hmm. you know, she does her thing. No pun intended trick with the John. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ha ha. And, and then they do this, the, the really, what I really liked about this is that they talk about the technology, but it's still 1931. Mm -hmm. So there are still, it's still, 
Ford T model cars. It's yeah. still, you know, while there's some technological advances, it's clearly for other people. Because mm. when she slides open the secret door, there's no electronic thing. Yeah. yeah. She steps on a pedal <laughs> to open the door. And then they go down, but then they show it like a little what would, would be at that time considered to be, you know, really high tech, you know, when they're showing basically slides on the projector. You yeah. Know? You know, <laughs> at, at, at down there, and they and they go through the plane. So, but you go through this whole thing, and by the end of it, you get the idea that there is the government, evil government thing. <laughs> they're doing something, and it has to do with these monsters and her. Mm -hmm. And then you get another one of those battle scenes that was beautifully rendered. Oh. You know, and you're just like, oh my god, how's this? And then you get to see the little five year old girl, girl at the end of the episode. <laughs> Yeah. With the knife. Yeah. Um, uh, we don't know what's going on there. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I just went on Wikipedia and found out. We don't We don't know it. Um, oh. Uh, yeah. No, 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 nothing. Um, I found out why the two are together. Um, and the the okay. backstory of that. Um, that. That's all. There's nothing about, you know, okay. her end or anything. Right. Um, but, yeah, it, it's, it's a very adult anime. Um, there yeah. is adult subject matter, but it is very much yeah. aimed at an audience that, you know, is not being talked down to. Yeah, if you're if you're tuning in for Beyblade, this ain't yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it no, anti Beyblade. Uh, um, it, yeah, I just when I first when I first saw that it was coming this season, I'm like, I love the key image. Yeah, I just love the red parasol. The yeah, con, the, just that contrast of it. I just love the look of it. When I watched that first episode, I'm like, holy crap! I can't wait to see more. Yeah. This is gonna, how are how is any of this. How are you making an umbrella into a crossbow? <laughs> this is freaking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know? And a crossbow that you can, like, you can reload. Yeah. yeah. And turn it into a bulletproof to... shield. I'm mm -hmm. like, this is, I'm sure cool. they're not going to probably discuss how that's done at all, but I'm just going to be amazed by it anyway. Yeah. Um, that's actually a really interesting point, Charming Sketches. And hey, how's it going? Um, hey. Lady Snowblood, you're absolutely right i'm trying to remember um i'm trying to remember the plot of this um i don't think i've seen yeah <laughs> i think you're absolutely right it, it's wow a fantastical you know it, it, it very much goes in its own direction but i agree um Moving right along from, from that yeah. comment in chat. <laughs> um, yeah, that's why I just went, wow. <laughs> um, uh, moving on to something that, uh, again, you know, we, we've talked about several cringy shows, and this is going to have to be one of them. Koe Kimo, um, um, a.k.a. It's Disgusting to Call This Love, which actually, yeah. Um, uh, story of basically a, a, a an adult man who falls for a teenage girl and won't leave her alone. I, is I not protective to no, her. No. Is romantically absolutely smitten. Mm -hmm. And it's as uh, creepy as it should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I did not see this one, and you guys did. So as you describe it, I, you will all see my visage yeah. in extreme disgust yeah. and horror. So. He, he keeps sending um, flowers to her every day. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. And it's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Despite her repeated protests to stop. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's just like, bumping into so, her. So where were, okay, so where were the parents? They, they her mother brother. thinks it's charming. Yeah. She's like, oh, yeah, another, another thing from such and such. I, I don't know that she knows he's, you know, an adult. I think she, she may just think he's some very thoughtful 17-year-old boy. I don't know. Um, uh, but yeah, get to episode two if you get that. Far. Oh boy, okay, mm. yeah, Ginger. This one does seem like it's taking the low road, like it's, it's very much that. And it's and it's odd because of the two creeper ones mm -hmm. where he is protective of the high school girl. I, I that right. one I find, I and mean, it's not that I find more merit, less merit, right? Yeah, but I, I find something that I think could be more hopeful. Mm -hmm. This one just feels like an adult psychologically beating down 
a teenager who is doing the right thing is like, no, mm-hmm. this is no, I'm not cool with this. Go away. You're mm-hmm. just this. The, you're my friend's older mm-hmm. brother. This is not cool. And it feels like it's just going to keep going to the point where it's like, oh, I finally convinced her to be in love with me. And it's like, dude, why are you not seeing the problem here? Yeah. <laughs> the key image on Wikipedia, which is the, the image from the first um, uh, uh, manga volume, is uh, the two of them um, uh, push together. He's holding her hand. Um, he's looking down at her. He has love hearts on him. Um, she has a broken heart above hers. He has a hand on her shoulder, and she has a hand on his chin, pushing him away. And it's like that is does sum it up, but it's also like she's Seth. No, no, not not cool. Yeah. Uh, um, this actually started on Pixiv, of all things. What? Yeah, it's uploaded to Pixiv, is and they have a whole manga publishing sort of. Okay. Interface on there. All I'm thinking is just like single yeah. keyframe images. Yeah. You're like, wow, y'all um, scrapped this together into a show. <laughs> Good on y'all. Um, and so they just did, did, did a whole thing, and that was a, a thing. Um, wow. So yeah, oh. um, eight volumes of the manga so far. Why? Anime coming along. Um, wow. And it's just it's it. There were indeed funny moments, and it's mm-hmm. like I just, you know, what I mean, it's like it's one of those things where it's like I shouldn't feel bad laughing at the funny moments. But I feel kind of like I don't know how to how to be with this because you're like pushing this yeah. not cool thing, and I'm like ha 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 ha. If this was like a friend of mine and this was happening yeah. to them, I would be like nine one one nine one one help yes, exactly. somebody help. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what you know what I mean? so, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's just I'm i I've now seen through episode two, and it's you know you know like mm. I don't I uh, yeah. See what, we'll see what happens. I'll keep you. I'll keep you informed. Let's move on to a much less complicated show, much much easier show. Let's make a mug too. Yay! Yes, cute. which is so a cute. cute pottery show. I don't know of any easier way of describing it. You know? That's all it is. That's all it is. And, and as I as I was saying before we we, we get on on online here. Um, that it made me understand better what why John likes um, Barry so much. Mm-hmm. This is just something that's just easy, relaxing. People are having fun with it. Like in the anime, you're having fun watching it. Mm-hmm. There's things that are relatable to it. And it's just calming, and it's just you know no high drama or yeah. you know anything. Cute girls just... doing cute pottery. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, funny thing is, I just watched an episode of How to Make Everything um, about pottery um, and, and making pottery on like a pottery wheel and so forth. And so I had just seen an episode, and he actually goes to a professional potter to, to, to throw it. The idea behind the, the, the channel is the guy basically says, what if um, human civilization hit the reset button and we went back and we had to rebuild human civilization from, you know, fire? Um, and so obviously, you know, not practical, but he's basically learning all of those skills. I'm okay. If we have fire, we can do this. If we have this, we can make that. Yeah, have that, building with that. fire is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, ow, ow, yeah. ow. <laughs> fire is pain. Fire, fire is, is pain. pain. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so he, he went to a professional potter on the pottery wheel he made to kind of, you know, try to make pottery. So I just seen like high, high definition video of a professional potter making pottery. And went into this, and I was like, yeah, that's it. Like, they really made it look right. It feels like actual pottery being made. Um, they've got all of the, uh, you know, motions and so forth down. So I was like, yeah, good, good job. Um, Which, as a sponsored product of the of the pottery JCs, it's it's spot on, as it has to be. Uh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, Which, I mean, I like these. I liked Hakone-chan. Mm-hmm. When it was the seven hot springs of Hakone, and they did yep. the anime that just featured each one of the hot springs as a different sort of like hot spring kami. Mm-hmm. That was just, it was just uh, cute. And all it did was just, it basically just advertised, oh, hey, there's this town and it has seven hot springs. Go visit. Yeah. You know, and it's like short episodes, just like Mug. And all you got was just like, oh, you know, that's kind of cool. Oh, look, there's in the middle of the town, there's like a, a place for foot bath. Mm, and I'm like, oh, yeah. that's kind of cool. So this mug thing, it's like, oh, you know, yeah, there are places in Japan that have their, that's their pottery thing. That's the, mm. that's the thing they're famous for. And here we are. 
And it's like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, it's exactly. Funny about pottery. Yeah. Um, also, um, if you like energetic girls, watch out for Mika. Oh, yeah. In this show, the, the blonde girl. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> And yeah, it, it's it's great having uh, an anime series that's sort of around, like you say in the chat, uh, these sort of education hobby oriented shows because yeah. you learn something too, you know. Yeah. That, that's cool. Um, and you end up. On, I have no doubt that some people who are like, very enthusiastic about what they see, there will be a spike in web searches yeah. for Japanese pottery, mm. <laughs> and any of these <laughs> sponsors, the JCs that are putting in for this series, if they have like a web presence where they can get international mm -hmm. orders, they're going to get business. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. And you know, you have a spare um, uh, spare basement, spare garage, have a pottery wheel, you know. Yep. Great yeah. hobby Fire during, people during, yeah. during Corona, you know. Yeah. There we go. Um, all right. Moving, moving from an uncomplicated series to the exact opposite. We got to talk about Odd Taxi. Oh my gosh! Wow! Oh! oh! Love it. If it hadn't been Steve, you know, really mm. pumping it up, I, I honestly, I really didn't have too much in the way of expectations of this, and just, holy crap, it blew my mind. <laughs> I'm like, wow! I didn't ask for it this, but I didn't fantastic. know I needed it. You know, like, yeah. damn! Oh, jeez. So. It, 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 so if you know nothing about it and you just see the visual, it's still not enough. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to watch yeah. it. Um, yeah. So you have to watch it. I, I will not spoil anything. I will say that um, it, it has a visually very cartoony style. Yeah. Um, so think almost like mm -hmm. uh, Dexter's Lab Cartoon Network kind of a thing. Um, but it is also... Um, oh, hey, John. Um, it is also very... Um, um, seriously paced, very quietly mm -hmm. paced. Yes. Um, we mentioned Taxi Driver before. Yep. Um, in terms of kind of that tone of a slow, quiet build kind of a story, where you're just kind of seeing people interacting and so forth. Uh, and it's set in, in, a, in an entire a, a world of, of furries, anthro, kind of B stars, yep. kind of a thing. Um, all 2D. Right. Well, how about the intro part? The intro was, like, incredibly yeah. interesting visually. Yeah. And it was nothing yeah. related to the actual show. <laughs> and it's like, so, it was, like, the best twofer. Because you're like, what yeah. is this incredible intro? And then you get into the actual show, and you're like, oh, crap, this is awesome, too. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is, wow. It's, the, and and for, for y'all in chat land who haven't seen it yet, reason why we're having difficulty talking around it is because they're really it, we, we kind of don't know yeah where the spoilers are we we honestly yeah. don't know yeah exactly so we might say something mm -hmm. and that, that it might be a big ass spoiler be an idea of what kind of show this is like think of all the the interesting um serial killer dramas the the police um, mm -hmm. the, the good, I should say, you know, police, uh, like, like Luther or mm -hmm. something or Denmark or Norway, you know, they, they had to be, tend, oh, yeah. tend to be better than, than American stuff. Right. Um, and it's just a slow burn from the beginning to the end of the episode. And you're just following this one particular character and you're being introduced to these other characters and you realize how interconnected everyone is even yeah. though they don't know it yeah and then like that first visual after the after the credits you're like uh <laughs> and then at the end at the very yeah. end you go uh, oh. uh? <laughs> like oh now wesley uh. mentions taxi cab confession yeah is that the name of the movie i was trying to come up with yeah where it's all the sort of interconnected well, characters as as well is it a like a true life series or is it because I thought there was one where it was well, somewhat issue... similar to this where you have a taxi and the sort of people that are in the taxi form the basis of the story and that their connections are somehow in there much like the way that odd taxi has done this so taxi cab well the HBO thing is yeah it's the HBO series yeah it's, it's just hidden cameras yeah. and taxis 
Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's all it is. Yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not nothing. Yeah. But this is there's a mystery element. There is like, as I was saying before, if you are into anime that are kind of like Death Note, mm. but it doesn't have any of the mystical writing yeah. stuff and names, yeah. but it has that kind of tension and kind of that 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 noir drama behind mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Um. And oh, if you like detective stories, if you like yeah. noir detective yeah. stories, yeah. this is right up your alley. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, because this is gonna be a you gonna you're it's gonna have to be there and watch it and try and mm -hmm. work out the threads. Yeah. You know, there's a lot. There's yeah. been a lot of material delivered in just this first yeah. episode. It's like, huh, how is this gonna play out? You know, where's that gonna lead me? Ooh. I'm gonna throw out a name, Satoshi Kon. You know, yeah. It, it's oh. it, it doesn't have the weird what is real and what yeah. is not. Yeah. It has yeah. that all of these things are going on and you've got to pay attention to all the plot threads yeah. to see who's this person's related to that, related to that. Yeah, because we have no backstory on any of these people. We're in the middle of whatever is happening in their <laughs> lives and in this universe. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah. And it presents, you know, visually, it looks like a kid's show. Like if you yeah. see screenshots, you think, oh, it's just, you know, it's just some yeah. weird goofy cute you know, little cat cab yeah. thing right and maybe it has like a, a noir like you know filter on it kind of but yeah <laughs> no <laughs> and, yeah, there you will were, not be disappointed yeah there were I, there were three moments in this where, where where all of us watching were like oh yeah. oh that mm -hmm. changes everything <laughs> but, yeah it was it was a it was a collective huh <laughs> it was very cool it was very cool very very cool um let's move on to osamake um aka um uh was i got rejected or made a comedy with a childhood friend absolutely will not lose um another one with a problematic premise this season i will admit um mm -hmm. So, young man gets rejected by a girl he's loved for a long time, um, and thus conspires with a girl who's in love with him, but he is not in love with, to undermine the woman, the girl he is in love with's relationship. Yeah. So, to get back at her, he's going to kind of destroy her relationship with the guy she's now dating. And that he is, ostensibly, at the beginning, never met. Right. And has no grudge against. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, it's. I'm glad I didn't watch this one. <laughs> it is played for comedy a, a lot of the, the time, but yeah. there is very much a a serious undercurrent. Not serious, but a an undercurrent of yeah, let's do this. Yeah, let's let, let's 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 move forward with it. I do think the show makes it fairly clear that this is a bad idea. Um, um, you know, it in context, a lot of things are like this is not going to go well, but it's like yeah. Uh, I don't know if I want to watch somebody screw themselves over this much, or screw other people over like this. Yeah. Um, well, again, it's like I felt like it was uh, Masa Munikun's Revenge mm -hmm. mixed with Orisuki, where you've got each girl has her emblematic hairpiece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can identify who the girls are by their hairpieces. Mm -hmm. And that this concept of revenge in any of them never really works out very well. And it's yeah. just, I, 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 I wanted, I wanted more out of this series. Um, first episode in, I, I'm not impressed. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's okay. It's just not right. really all that super crazy. I'm like chomping at the bit to see more of it. Yeah. Um, characters, are I cute. Hate. <laughs> characters are cute, you know, um, there's some fun interactions. Again, if you kind of take the premise as it is and then just let the, sh let the episode ride, you can kind of enjoy the interaction of the characters and all that kind of stuff. But yes, yeah, we're kind of one of those, ah, I don't like, in I don't enjoy supporting this kind of a show, you know? Well, know. just for, from the Masa <laughs> Munikin revenge mm -hmm. one, you do find out why he wants revenge. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this one, there's they've alluded to, like, they talked over like mm -hmm. summer, I think it was. It was pointed out when we were all talking. They, they. So he's had some kind of more conversation mm -hmm. with his yeah. love interest, 
but it's not none of it is entirely clear as to what exactly occurred that makes him be like this driven to get revenge yeah to ruin somebody some other guy's experience to ruin this girl's experience mm -hmm. what terrible thing happened so i'm you know, this is another one. I'm going to take that bullet. I want to see, do we ever get, like, a full-on flashback that mm -hmm. it's like, oh, okay, I understand. She's, like, turns out she's really, really a cruel, terrible person. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why your best friend never mm -hmm. liked her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, yeah. I want something something out of that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because this, is, this so far, one episode, I... Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um... Moving on to something um, that actually surprised me quite a bit. The Saint's magic power is omnipotent. Um, oh, yeah. Because um, Office Lady, going about her day, um, ends up getting transported to a, to a magical world as the, the holy saint of power, um, along with another girl, another, another Japanese girl. Yeah. Um, and the other girl is the one who's kind of chosen to be the, the 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 powerful saint, while the the, the obvious... younger yes. cuter, uh huh, yeah. You know that's funny. I had not thought about that. Yeah, uh -huh. ah. yeah. The, the prince just waltzes in yep. and says, "Oh, you must be the saint," and kind of ignores the slightly older, bespectacled girl. Yeah, takes the high school girl and doesn't yeah. take the professional uh -huh. office lady. Yeah, ah. and like <laughs> that clearly kind of. And it's, it's actually kind of sad because it clearly she realizes that she's clearly annoyed by it, but she is also clearly like kind of used to it. Right. Like she's like, well, she's there we go again. There we go. She's definitely adult about it as well. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? It's like she's mm -hmm. and what's her yeah. primary concern. Okay. That's fine. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. How are you sending me back? Yeah. Exactly. You know, uh -huh. like, yeah. Aha, okay. Yeah. Um, Could have cried and wailed about it, but no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, absolutely. Things. She's very, very grown up about it. No truck yeah. coon, just a yep. just a spell appears. Yep. Um, and so she, she, she just starts spending time just sort of wandering around kind of the, 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 the palace. Um, she's not allowed to, like, really go out because, like, you are a very important person and you'd be mobbed and so forth. Um, and she ends up in essentially like the alchemist's academy, uh, where she starts making potions. And the hint is that the story is, or that my assumption is that, um, as the all powerful saint person, um, she can make very powerful potions. And so she's going to be able to solve the crisis sort of, uh, medicinally as opposed yeah. to going out and casting spells in, in, in combat and so forth. Which, I mean, they've right. even touched on that. Mm -hmm. It's like, not only is she good at potion making, but you're also getting that sense of, like, she doesn't know how much magic power she has. Mm -hmm. She's doing potions right now, but, you know what I mean? It's like, episode one, potion. Yeah. Episode mm -hmm. two, <clears throat> potions, and, hey, let me drop a mountain on you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. oh, <laughs> could go there. Mm -hmm. I think I'll send so, myself back home again. Boing! There you go. You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so one of the things that, that I enjoyed about this particular anime was the fact that, you know, definitely was at, at first I was kind of like, you know, I don't mind this guys, but you know, I, every now and again, you're just kind of like, oh, okay, it's not this mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yeah, through yeah. it. You know, but it's as if they understood the trope, you know, and so the two girls, the women show up, well, actually a girl and a woman, <laughs> she, they show up and, you know, like, like you said, John, she takes the adult option and says, okay, well, you got your saint, so what about me? What would, you know, how are you going to with me? How, how, are, how what, where, where are we going to go with that? And it's practical. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's very practical. It's very, you know, okay, well, we're going to put you up here for the timing. And then she finds out that she's, what she, she's into botany. Mm -hmm. from you know her previous life and so she's coming across this kind of stuff and she's interested and they're just like hey you're okay well this is great this is great you can help us make these wonderful potions and you should have some magical power so you know whatever and then we discover that she's actually pretty powerful mm -hmm. to a certain point and so it's just and instead of taking this dramatic turn to how will I ever get through the whatever. Yeah. It's more along the lines yeah. of like, 
hey, I'm doing something useful. I like this. I'm okay with this. I'm, I'm, I live here now. It's a little bit awkward, but you know, this, I'm living at the Institute now and I'm doing these things. And isn't this, this is actually kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And then you have the moment at the end of the anime where people are hurt, like legit hurt. Mm -hmm. And she comes in and it's her moment to shine with the potion that is, you know, they come to figure out how powerful she is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you get that one little conversation at the end between the guy who's the head of the institute and uh, the mm -hmm. person, I guess, who's in charge of security of the castle. Yeah. I don't know who, who the guy is. And they're saying, well, yeah, she's coming along nicely. By the way, has anyone seen the girl? Yeah. The girl who that the prince just kind of grabbed and said, hey, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, And everyone's just like, yeah, where is she? Mm -hmm. no, one, no one's seen her. So. Yeah. Well, you know, when you go into battle, things do happen. <laughs> yeah. And I imagine an untrained saint character, mm -hmm. unless you've got six months to, like, <laughs> train them on effective combat, yeah. attack, defense, healing, blah, blah, blah. You're going to die, like, a terrible, terrible death if you're thrown into the middle of the battlefield. Heal people. Heal with what? <laughs> <laughs> Avoid I'm, that I'm, arrow. I'm, Avoid I'm, the arrow. I'm, oh. This, uh, <laughs> message for you, sir. Um, <laughs> I, 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 this may just be my dirty mind, but I, I suspect she's being trained. Yes. By the prince. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, offering healing services of a special. Yes, nature. exactly. Yes. Um, th that's one of the interesting things, Wesley, is that like, she says, okay, how are you going to send me back? And they all kind of look at her like, uh, uh. <laughs> um, and they don't say anything, but the, the clear uh, uh, intent is like, there's no go home spell. Yeah, this is the one-way trip. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So, who knows? But if Dog Days has taught us nothing besides the fact that cute puppy girls are cute puppy girls, True. it's that you just have to believe enough in the power of friendship. No. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> enough, it'll together. go home. Exactly. Um, okay. There's no place like Tokyo. There's no place <laughs> like Tokyo. <laughs> I love how biased this is too. Why all the saints have to come from Japan? <laughs> Not have gotten somebody from like Australia, Madagascar. I just thought Detroit. Yeah, Detroit. What? Digimon season two actually deals with this. It, not in you know Isekai series, but like Digimon season two, they start meeting up with other you know Digidestined kids who have been changed, and they're from like Russia and England and you know Sao Paulo, and it's like well, of course you know they're not all from Japan. There is the rest of the world, oh, yeah. <laughs> Which becomes a problem because they show up and it's like hello, and it's like you know konnichiwa, see. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh right, there's a language barrier. That's a thing. No <laughs> Uh huh. What they say? <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Um. Um, is there any sword and sorcery anime as good as Record of Lotus War? I don't know what good means, particularly with regard to Lotus War. Um, because people have some very strong opinions about yeah. the how good <laughs> Lotus War is. Um, so I, well, I don't does good know. mean animation quality, story right. quality, story continuity? Yeah, because the, anima the animation quality in, in Lotus varies dramatically. There's, there's some great scenes in some which like... Um, yeah, right. But... Uh, Gosh, um, I'm actually trying to think of some some really good like D and D esque um, fantasy series. Um, Which Dragon House Hunter did have a well, yeah, awful did. lot of D and D great yeah. characters mm -hmm. and D and oh, D great did. like facial expressions. Um, <laughs> I really like um, Grimgaro Fantasy and Ash, which is right back there. Ha ha. ha. Um, which is not quite isekai. I mean, it is. It is implied it's a guy, these, these characters just show up in this world, uh, they're like teleported in, but they, there's no going back, they, and they have no memories, they just are in this world now, and they have to kind of fight that stuff. Group um, uh, Fantasy Ash. Um, I've not seen 12 Kingdoms, but I've heard people recommend that as well. Um, um, Escaflone, yeah, great great call. Yeah. Escaflone, yeah. definitely. Giant Robots too, which, you know. What show is not improved by giant robots? Let's, let's be honest. Which every time I kept seeing that es Escaflone was coming on like Adult Swim mm -hmm. or Toonami, it there was an ad for a long time for Escaflone, which was like a nasal decontestant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so every time I saw the ad, I'm like, that is too damn funny. Which one came first, the nasal uh, decongestant medicine Escaflone. or the show? <laughs> yeah, like 
Wow, when I'm feeling kind of down and stuffy, I watch Escaflone. Escaflone. Oh. No, 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 no. Now I feel better. <laughs> like, oi. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, I'm strong. You can also watch the other shows set in um, uh, the Lotus universe. Um, there's Magenta Cristania and uh, Rune Soldier Louie, which are all actually set in that universe. So, very different, though. I mean, Rune Soldier Louie's a co comedy. About yeah, totally. Um, speaking of fantasy, let's move on to a modern supernatural fantasy, Shaman King 2021, yep. um, which really excited me. It's uh, Netflix only um, uh, and still uh, relegated to Japan for now, but it is available and um, um, through various through various means. Um, I was excited by this because um, I read a good chunk of the manga. Um, I watched some of the original anime, um, which is back in I think two thousand, year two thousand ish. I thought it was two thousand one. Two thousand one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I was looking that up on Mal. Okay, yeah, okay, two thousand one. Um, and I was very curious to see how what the what, how much of the story they would adapt in that first episode, like how far they'd get in. Man, they get through a lot. Um, they also opened with a pretty dang dark sequence. Um, that opening scene of Shaman King 2021 yeah. is really serious. Um, um, it shows a birth occurring. Um, the birth of a very important character, for those of you who've seen, who are familiar with Shaman King. Um, and the, um, uh, th that whole thing and bad things happen during that birth. Uh, it's really interesting. Um, and then you get the rest of it. Um, I'll be honest, the trailers for this had me a little worried, but the episode really succeeded, um, in what I was hoping it would do. It covers a lot of ground, introduced to the, to the, the initial characters well. They don't try to cram every single character in there. Um, they definitely do justice to those Hiroyuki Takei character designs, which are yep. very much 90s distinctive urban character designs. Um, definitely Kitaro is his little friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah Kitaro is his friend. <laughs> um, just very visually distinctive. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was, it was a, a good mix of things. Uh, most of the original cast is back. So if you've seen any of the original series in Japan in the, the Japanese dub, it's most of the same actors, which is cool. Uh, Megumi Hayashibara is also doing the opening credit sequence, so that's all cool. Um, so yeah, I I really enjoyed it. John, what did you think? Because I know you haven't, you know, <laughs> uh, you're not a I'm huge Shaman King fan. <laughs> yeah, not a Shaman King fan, but I, I I enjoyed the. What got me was him sitting in the graveyard, and then everybody in the graveyard with him so it's like i'm not I, the kitaro character i'm like the, the dude's like a foot tall i'm like I, you know i get the point that you're trying to make with this and the, the character designs and they're wacky in some elements but i really liked him coming in and seeing you know this whole graveyard scene yeah and here you have your our main character talking to people and there's nobody around and then you see what's going on and it's like okay i kind of you know this is kind of neat i enjoy the idea you know the people who have spirit vision can see things that others can't and how they interact with that and i liked the way that this episode went dealing with the sword maker and dealing with the samurai and i'm like okay you know wow i'm we're gonna see how far Shonen it's gonna go, and like how much mm. fighty of the week it's gonna be. But oh, just I, wait! <laughs> I I liked at least where this episode went. That I'd be like, you know, I could I could dig that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so as far as I know, the original Shonen King anime um, was ac was reasonably accurate to the manga. They just ran out of manga, and the manga was very much ongoing. Oh, and so they just they they, they stopped the anime at some point. We're like, well, we can't really get to the ending yet because that's a whole thing that's being worked on. Um, and the the anime just unfortunately at the time just couldn't compete with the other big franchises, right. which kind of petered out. Um, but it has a, a very firm following, so um, fingers crossed. But uh, yeah, I think it, it was it was really cool. For those uh, familiar with it, um, it it goes through introduction of Yo, 
um, introduction of Amidamaru and um, his friend and uh, the initial fight with Wooden Sword Ryu. Um, so he, he, he defeats Wooden Sword Ryu at the end of this episode, basically. Um, and Using yeah. just a grave placard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really cool uh, final yeah. sequence there. Um, I, I mentioned this before. One of the things I really like about Shaman King is that it is an ultimately redemptive anime. Um, Yo is... Yo believes that every shaman has good in them. And so every antagonist he fights, he ultimately believes in and is trying to make a good person. Is, you're trying to turn to his side, basically. Uh, turn away from evil and so forth. And so I'm, I'm hopeful to see how, where that goes because that's one of the things that colors the fights in a way that makes them entertaining where it's not just wait until the hero you know, pulls the thing out of their rear end that allows them to beat the bad guy in the fight. Right. Um, you have that sort of moral element to the fight of, okay, given all the terrible things this person is doing, how, how are we going to have that redemptive arc? Um, right. So we'll see. But, uh, yeah, Fast Shaman King 2021, hopefully eventually coming with a, um, uh, an English sub over on Netflix. Another one I enjoyed a lot. I know, John, you enjoyed a lot. Super Cub. Get to watch it. A.K.A. Yeah. Honda, the animated commercial. Yep. Uh, <laughs> um, or Yuru Cub. Yep. Um, <laughs> I love I loved that. That was that was an awesome one. I love it. Um, so it it again. Let's talk. This is a very interesting structure for an episode. Yeah. Where you have just this high school girl, she's apparently an orphan, she lives alone. Like she says, I don't have any parents. Um, um, and she's kind of going back and forth to school, and she's obviously a little depressed. Um, like she, she's, she's not like unhappy with her life, but like it's a very plain existence. Yeah. And then she goes to decide to, decides to, to, buy, to buy a Honda Super Cub, you know, um, scooter basically. Um, the one that kills people, apparently. Which I, I, you know, I just so want to know. The tipping moment is her seeing basically that Vespa parked mm. in the bicycle shed. Yeah. And it's like, I'm hoping we're going to get more fleshing out of her backstory mm. where we find out, does did that have a particular meaning? Mm. Because she had to go on her bike, not just you know, immediately next door to the school. She had to go find the place to find yeah. the murder, murder bike. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So this was, there's a, there's a moment of reason there that I really desperately want to know. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. that drove her from same wake up time, same routine, same lunch, same this, mm -hmm. same that mm -hmm. to break the routine. Yeah. You know, and it's like, mm -hmm. ah, okay. And I loved that. Like, you know, I pointed out, I loved the way that the, anime goes from this like super detail mechanics of bikes and the super cub and, and machinery to this really interesting person character like, yeah drawing style and it's like it was just visually very interesting to follow like it's a slightly sketchy and yeah. slightly sketch style animation style which is really it works very well um it's just very distinctive yeah yeah well it's, it's such it i would have expected the animation that sketchy look to have been dropped because of the clean lines yeah. and the hard details of all the mechanicals mm -hmm. but you have like this three part thing where you've got all the backgrounds are wonderful but they're not exactly 100% sharp mm -hmm. then you have the mechanicals which are like razor sharp yeah and then you have the the actual characters that are this interesting sketch mm -hmm. and it's like wow yeah. you guys made some Really incredibly visually interesting choices. Mm -hmm. I wanted. To, I can't believe I missed watching this. But you did give me, I think, a name for the next uh, punk band I may be in, which is Murderbike. Murder <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, there we Murder go. Murderbike. Um, and for those curious, basically, the the reason she's able to get the bike cheap is that several of its previous owners have died. <laughs> so it's like it's you know people are like ah, no one wants to buy it. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's, it's not like it's unsafe or anything. It's just uh, unlucky. Yeah, I mean, yes. it's it's beautifully maintained. <laughs> Speaking of beauty, let's talk about those Snow White notes. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Love it. Love yeah. it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Um, love it. So this is based on a manga. Um, it is about a um, uh, a young man who plays the shamisen. Um, a very, very angsty young man, I must say. Yeah, very. Um, and who uh, travels from the middle of nowhere to Tokyo to kind of find his musical voice. Um, and episode He's one... He's going to find his sound. Yes. In an angsty way. <laughs> <laughs> um, episode one deals with some, some drama around a young woman he meets and, and her situation in life and so forth. Um, and you get at the very beginning, and basically the at, at, and a little bit in the middle, but also very, very much at the very end, you get some stunning shamisen music. Yeah. You know, if you don't like traditional Japanese music, this is the kind of thing that will change your mind. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the kind of thing yeah. where you're like, oh, I get it now. Like even if I don't yeah. love it, I I see where it's coming from. Um. And it's, yeah, it's about playing this traditional Japanese instrument that is very distinctive, very different. It was... So I enjoyed... Well, yeah. speaking as a person who does enjoy that music, yeah. um, if you are a fan of the Yoshida Brothers, you're mm -hmm. definitely going to like this. Um, they're, they're brothers that, that play dueling kind of as Chad says. Um, one of the things I really liked about about this particular anime was from beginning up until the very, 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 very end, which kind of ended on a weird discordant note, no <laughs> pun intended. Um, but uh, it, leave Umiko out of this. <laughs> was that I was glad that they decided, at least as far as I know, that they didn't decide that they decided to make certain characters permanent and other characters not, mm. and they don't kind of you it in, it's revealed in a natural way. Mm -hmm. towards the towards the end of the anime yeah and when they play the music it's almost solely the music you really don't mm -hmm. get a whole lot of narration behind it so you can actually concentrate when he plays in the club and everyone's yeah. just like <laughs> you know because you'll be watching the screen you'll be like going, oh my god <laughs> um because it's so good but it's just i i'd like how this is wrap, you know, wrapping itself into into something else. And so it's mm -hmm. so it's like it's it's almost as if I you know I could tell that they were getting through the drama to get the drama out of the way mm -hmm. almost, right. mm -hmm. so that we can go on to the to more important things of how is the music going to progress, and that's the key part of this. What I think it is about the series is how is his music going to improve mm -hmm. as it goes on. Mm -hmm. Totally. Well, episode two, he loses both of his arms, so it's really not about uh, it. Yeah, <laughs> darn it. Not. Darn it. And the aliens um, invade. Exactly. The world comes to an end. It's a kaiju fight. It's <laughs> actually a hidden kaiju series. Oh, the Shamisen was a total red herring. Clever. Um, yeah, I, w watching this, the intro to it, I was like, okay, I'm really... This is reminding me of the series I watched about the Koto group, mm. and... You know, their school club and them, like, getting better at playing the Koto and how beautiful the music was. And so, so the intro to this, I'm like, okay, I'm liking this. I'm watching along. They get to the club scene. And I'm like, I'm sold. I'm, mm -hmm. I was sold at the beginning, but now yeah. I'm absolutely sold. Mm -hmm. The music, I, I, if I would quibble about anything, is, like, I think if you're watching his hand mm. movements on the neck, it's not – entirely so, keyed to his to playing mm -hmm. but when they zoom in yeah they've done the work to get the figures yeah. right but when mm -hmm. you see him up there on the one stage or two in shots distance, where it's yeah 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 like when he's on stage you can just see his hands kind of moving it's not, mm -hmm. not you can't discern any kind of like good chord right. hitting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right but when they zoom in down on it you that's where they put the money in getting his mm -hmm. finger movements right um but it's just, you know, even for an angsty character <laughs> and this, you know, his, I guess it's like coming of age, his finding yeah, his, sure, his, yeah. his, his coming of age. I, it's a really interesting way that he gets to Tokyo mm -hmm. and this experience that he has in Tokyo and how these different people start clicking in. It's like, I'm, I want to know. Mm -hmm. I want to know. I want to know how this works out. I want to know how, you know, being at a, at a punk club 
and getting exposure from people web streaming. Yeah. I want to know how this keeps going. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, what does this mean? Obviously, somebody shows up at the end of the first, you know, mm. episode that it's like, he didn't get found because he said something. Mm. He got found because it had to have been web presence. There mm -hmm. had to be people mm -hmm. talking. Yeah. Right. Um, I've seen the sep second episode and I'm just absolutely hooked. Mm. <laughs> so. Nice. I'm, I'm like, glad you said that. I'm very glad you said that because the end of the episode, I was totally like, what the hell is that? <laughs> why is it? Why is there, it? Yeah, Flash you, bangs I, in a SWAT team and, and this crazy dominatrix looking lady going on. I mean, <laughs> what? The, and, and, yeah. 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 There's, there, it's, it's quite amusing and interesting to see who she is. Okay. It's like, okay. okay. Huh. Mm -hmm interesting and that 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 makes that you'll then go back to that first episode and be like okay total sense yeah i got you. Oh, okay gotcha mm -hmm. cool, it's cool. like it's good, it's good. it's good mm -hmm. i was a little worried there yeah mm -hmm. so good i also appreciate yeah, I, thought, I thought it was like a web-based attack like somebody mm -hmm. saw him like streamed it was like i need to take him for my collection I'm like oh god <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> i also appreciate that he deals with his angst in episode one um, like obviously he's not gonna be, he's still gonna be somewhat, somewhat, something of an angsty teen, but he kind of he resolves that fundamental problem he's having, not yeah. resolved, but he addresses it by the end of episode one. So you're like, okay, he he now is gonna be growing from this point. He's not right. gonna be stuck for the next eleven episodes. Thank right. you. And that's that, and that's where in two, mm -hmm. you 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 know more of this clicks in, and you're seeing him cool. taking more more. I wouldn't say necessarily more effective steps, but kind of like mm. more baby steps okay. because yeah. he's so angsty. He's trying to, mm. you know, tough it out and figure it out for himself. It's yeah. like, okay, yeah, we got you. And we have another character that just tried to tough it out this season. Um, let's move on to To Your Eternity. Um, huh. Which is, yeah, um, this uh, the manga of this was the follow-up um, to A Silent Voice. So the manga author of A Silent Voice, this is her next work. Um, it's been going for a while now. Um, mm. It's... <sighs> Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. I but... mean... Oh. But it's an emotional bruiser. Yeah. Yeah. It's heavy. I mean, quite literally, not a lot... No, just, like, not a lot happens. Right? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's not like some, you know, great cataclysmic something or other. No, mm -hmm. it's actually just the character development experience mm -hmm. basically in isolation. Yeah. And it's just like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then the things that it does with that. And mm -hmm. it's just like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, ah. It really. Um, and obviously, we're not going to tell you what happens because that's kind of part of the. This is very much one of those anime series where it's like, just start watching it. <laughs> um, you'll 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 very get very much strongly get an understanding of what it is, but it's it's strong, or it's 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 serious. Um, and what I appreciate about it is how it lets the audience understand the emotional um, weight of what's happening to the character what's going on, the consequences of what the character is doing, yeah. um, and the fact that the, um, th there's stuff going on behind the surface that the character isn't saying, because the character wouldn't say that. Um, and so you, got, you understand through actions and through other things going on that, oh, right, that, mm, mm -hmm, yeah, oh, you know, that kind of stuff. So when, when I for start watching the this um for for the season and I was watching myself in the first like thirty seconds going, Oh god, it's the egg. Oh she's egg. Yeah oh, god. <laughs> Where it's um, Angel's egg, here we go. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like you know, and it's just you're just kinda of, and and like you say you just it's this experience mm -hmm. anime where you just kind of kind of watch it and unfolds for you and then after a while you realize that you're like 
Yeah. And you don't and you don't want to, you know, miss anything, even though it doesn't seem like anything's happening. Yeah. But it all builds on itself and there's things in and you can forecast what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. that's, you know, there's, we don't want to give any spoilers away, but you're going to be able to forecast, oh, crap. Okay, yeah. here we go. You know, and, but getting from that point to where you know you're going to be, and then the next step that happens after that, you're just like, Ugh. It's one of the things okay. I really appreciate about it is precisely that, that you realize what's going to happen and you're like, oh. They're gonna go and like yeah like those are the consequences of those actions, you know. Yeah. yeah. And it it builds on you like oh oh we, we, oh that's mm, you know and it it allows you as a viewer to put the pieces together, um you know ahead of things and then see that actually occur without them trying to pull yeah. the rug out under you for drama, you know just to surprise right. you no 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 like this this is what happens. Um, but yeah, that, that's how it works. And yeah, the, the story, the evolution of the story is really interesting. Um, from where it goes from here, um, it, it does continue on. Like, like definitely, there's more, more evolution. <laughs> to give you yeah, an I idea, mean, literally, this is the start of the journey. Yeah, <laughs> like a um, lot happened. Literally, but this is only the start. <laughs> yeah, and this is volume one of the manga. Like, this is where the the this is where the first volume ends. Um, so it's kind of interesting wow. that they've they've kind of condensed that into this episode, which is completely appropriate. Like I, that, this yeah. is yeah, that is how to, <laughs> uh, it's one of the things that this that this anime does very well is that you become invested very quickly mm-hmm. with everything and everyone that's going on yeah. around, mm-hmm. you know, with in, in connect in connection with each other, and you become very invested in what's going on, and it's just. Okay, this is happening. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is happening. Oh dear God. Yeah. You know, and this is happening, and then you're going. Okay, then this, if this, this, and this happen, then, that, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. <laughs> you, you go on, but it's 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 then you you realize that the first episode is merely a prelude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To mm-hmm. everything else that's going to happen in the rest of the same mm-hmm. This is just yeah. the one little part yeah. that says, "Here's the setup. Mm-hmm. Go." And what I love is, okay, without getting into, into spoilers, um, this is a moral, emotional setup. It's, mm-hmm. it's establishing the values this character has moving forward. So yeah. you understand? Okay, this, this, you know, he's experienced these things. Now, you know, he can move on to the next step. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is good. Um, y- you know, um, you're not going to laugh much during this episode. No. Yeah. It- it's not a laugh riot. No. And that's, I think, that's where the hardest part for me is going to be. Yeah. Is silent voice was just that's emotionally rending. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this, I'm, not that I think it's, necessarily has to go that way but i just Mm -hmm. i am definitely going to have to dial into this at a point where i am i'm good i'm at a Mm -hmm. good spot where if this does those kinds of like real soul searching moments that i'm not just gonna be like okay i'm gonna pause this Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna go cry outside for a half hour Mm -hmm. and then come back in (laughs) yeah like Mm -hmm. yeah when shoya opens the door to their apartment and looks through to the balcony you know, moments like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So this is why, folks, that you have to parse your anime. So that when you watch something like this, mm-hmm. you have slimes to go through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something silly. <laughs> Making yeah. pottery. Mm-hmm. That's why you need those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Balance. Yeah. <laughs> Everything works. Yeah. It was foretold that he would balance. bring balance to the force. Ah, yes. Huh. Um, which he did, but that's a whole nother story to talk about. Um, yeah. That is it for Well, our... that happened in a galaxy far. No, for it's true. In a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Okay, that's true. Yeah. Um, this has been the spring 2021 anime preview. Thank you all for joining us for this. Um, yeah. And now we're going to move away. Uh, We're going to take a quick pause and come back with some anime news. 
in a few minutes. We will be right back. <laughs>